On today's episode of Tuesday Tools, I'm looking at nodes for Adobe After Effects. Now this is an incredibly powerful tool from FX Factory, but right off the bat, I gotta tell you, disclaimer, this is only available for Mac OS. So that's just the way it is. Don't be mad at me, I'm sorry. However, this does work for Final Cut Pro, uh, Motion, as well as Adobe Premiere Pro on Mac. So that's very cool. This tool has been used in major motion pictures like Rise of the Planet of the Apes, The Avengers, Captain America Winter Soldier, Ender's Game, as well as a bunch of others. It's hard to say what it does specifically because it can do so many things, but I think for a lot of these films it was used for those really cool abstract heads up display elements with like things like little infographics or little globe spinning or probably a lot of the elements that you might have seen in Iron Man's heads up display. In fact, today I'm gonna be creating a cool element. It's a terrain map of Iceland, as well as a few other elements like um, sample infographics. I just wanna show you what you can do with this tool. All right, I'm inside of After Effects here. I'm gonna create a new comp. We'll call it Iceland terrain map. And then I'm gonna create a new solid inside of here. Call this Iceland. And now I've already installed nodes. So to open it up or to apply it, I'm gonna to go to window and effects and presets panel. And then at the bottom, there's a little subfolder called Yano Box, and that's where you'll find it. I'm gonna drop that directly on my solid layer. And here is the Nodes 3 interface here. Now, it's pretty neatly organized because things can get cluttered real fast. So what I recommend is you don't open more than like two or maybe three of these subgroups because there's so many parameters once you dive in, it can get start to get a little confusing. So it's nice to focus on one category at a time. So right now it defaults to this circle with a few nodes here. Um, you can see that I can turn on lines, I can do text elements, I can put up a background. With this tutorial, I'm really only gonna be scratching the surface of what you can do with this tool. In fact, no matter how much I show you or no matter how in depth I go with this tutorial, it's really only still gonna be scratching the surface because Notes 3 is just insanely powerful with what you can do with it. Um, if you just want to go the easy route and apply something real quick, you can browse the presets here, and there's a bunch of different categories. You can save your own as well, but we have diagrams. Um, there's just a bunch of different stuff. HUD elements, nodes in the sky, particles, wireframe grids. So let's get cranking on this Iceland terrain map. I'm going to try to take you step by step here on how I'm going to create this. So first, I'm going to go down to form. Right down here, you can see it's set to circle. We're looking at a circle right now with 40 nodes. So if I drop down circle, you can see there's a couple of different options. I have sphere, spiral, uh, let's see here. And as I change these forms, you can see that the parameters change in conjunction. So I can go down to grid. Um, so it's pretty, pretty cool. But what I wanna do is I wanna use the Iceland map as my form. So I'm gonna come down here and select from image colors. And it defaults to this world map just as a sample. But down here I can select image, so I can go down here and select an actual layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go grab an image that I have, which is this Iceland height map. So a height map is essentially gonna have elevation data that translates from the luminance data. So this is a grayscale image. All the white data in here is gonna to translate to higher elevations, whereas the darker black elements are gonna to translate to lower elevations. And all the gradations in between are gonna make it this cool terrain map. So I actually got this from a website called uh, Tangram Height Mapper. I think that's how you pronounce it. You can see here, it's just this world map of, um, it's a height map and you can zoom in and select specific locations and then export that right over here. So that's what I did. I'll link to that down in the video description if you're interested in playing around with that. So what I need to do is go grab this here and I'm gonna actually drag this and drop it directly in my timeline. And then I'm just gonna turn the visibility off um, because I'm gonna be using it inside of nodes. I don't need to actually see the layer. So all I need to do is go down to form and go grab that Iceland height map, which is layer one. We're gonna see a change in here, but if I zoom in, it looks funky like it's not you know, looking right just yet. So I have to adjust some parameters. Mainly it's the threshold and the size here. So if I bring the threshold down to zero, now you can see we've got something going on here, but it's still way too small. So I need to crank the size up to fit the 1920 by 1080 frame here. Okay, so now we got this Iceland map. Um, I'm actually gonna switch the component to luminance. And you can see if I zoom in real far, it's got all these nodes here, um, which is pretty cool. 
And I can actually turn down the resolution of that. So let's bring that down to like five. And then you're gonna start to see, there we go. Now we got these nodes. Now, real quick, if I close the form, I have different node option parameters down here. I have nodes, node size, and nodes color. So if I go down here, I can actually change these nodes to whatever I want. So if I wanna use an image, an icon, however I wanna make this map, um, I can do it right here in the nodes type. So I could go to image list and I could put in different images so it could be like a collage of different things. But for this depth map or this terrain map, I'm just gonna be using a solid shape and I'll leave it at the default here. But I can go down to no node size as well, um, crank that size down. There's just a bunch of different ways that you can um, change this and you can look you can do like increase decrease there's a ton of cool stuff but i'm going to leave it on uniform and i like that um, size of 10. and i'm going to go back up to form and now we're going to start to give this some texture and see if we can pop out that terrain make it um, make it give it some depth so for that um, right down here you can use image colors and that's going to blend it in with the original we could do that um, there's Luma to node size, which is going to take all those darker ones and make them small, and the white, L white luminance data is going to make those large. And I can crank up the amount here. So this is zero, and as I crank it all the way up to one, you can see we're getting kind of a cool look there. Let's bring it down a little bit, maybe to 0.75 around there. And now just below that, you have displace. So as I start to crank this up, that's when you're gonna notice it displaces. It's hard to notice because we're looking top down on it. So what we need to do now is go up to the transformation properties. And here is where you can start to twirl it around in 3D. Now you can use the ca a standard After Effects camera or you can animate it here in the transformation options. And you'll notice that this is not a 3D layer. So that's very, very cool. You can fly a camera around if you want. But I'm just gonna go down here and I'm gonna grab this X rotation and I'm gonna rotate it down to like negative 65. And now you can see we're starting to get something. It's not looking real great right now, so I'm gonna make a couple of adjustments to make it look a little bit a little bit cooler. So I'll go back down to form. What I can do is I can turn the resolution up. Let's turn it up to like 15. Turn up the influence to size. And I'm gonna bring the displacement down to like 20. You know, I'm just playing with some parameters here. So that's already looking better. I'm gonna go down to node size and let's bring that down See if we can bring that down to five. That's looking a little bit better. That's looking cool. You can see as I mess with the influence to size, it really starts to give it that added depth. So there you go. Now we got the starts of a good looking map here. All right, now let's say we wanna animate it. Like I just want it to spin around. So I could come in here and manually keyframe this uh, Z rotation here. However, there's an animation section here. If I go down, there's just a checkbox and I can actually automatically animate any of these properties over time. So I can do transform uh, Z rotation here and then I just set a speed. So let's set a speed of like 25. Now if I wanted to spin the other direction, I can just do negative 25. Now I'm not entirely sure how we could make this perfectly loop. So it'd be much easier if I went and animated the transform property and just did like one rotation and then timed it that way. But what's so powerful about this method is you can animate four different attributes here over time in conjunction with this oscillator right here. So I can set the oscillator to wave, random, or noise and then I can set all the specific things here to have it do all kinds of crazy stuff. And now one thing with, uh, with a node set up like this is you can get some um, aliasing and you can get different things. So what I can do is I can go down to the rendering section here and I can click on depth sorting and I can specify what I want to be changed in the depth, whether it's opacity, luminosity, or both together. So if I do opacity, you're gonna see as it gets further out, it's uh, more translucent, and I can set that to be luminosity. So you can see it gets darker. I can do the both at the same time, or I can set it to fog, which I have no idea what that is. It's like a combination of the two. 
And also you'll notice that while there's no 3D uh, layers selected here, your motion blur also doesn't work on this. So if you go in the rendering section here, you have a motion blur tab and I can set this to high and then watch what happens. I'm gonna get some nice blur here. But not only that, then you can control the shutter angle and the shutter offset. So if you want it to be more blurry, you can crank that shutter angle up. And I already have the anti-aliasing set up to best, so I'm gonna leave it there. So now I'm gonna render this bad boy out. I'm gonna do one last thing here. I'm just gonna animate the displacement so, so that it kind of pops up and then pops back down. So it'll go from zero to 20. So there you have it, like in 10 minutes, I put this together and this could be a perfect element. You just like, you could see this in Iron Man's heads up display. Let's say he's like flying over Iceland and a little like display spinning around. Boop, 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 boop. Let me show you another cool thing. I'm gonna reset this. Now let's say that as Iron Man is flying over Iceland, uh, a TIE fighter flies by. It could happen, they're both Disney properties. So I actually downloaded this free OBJ file from a website called TurboSquid. And let me show you, Nodes actually works with these 3D uh, OBJ files. So what I wanna do here is I can go to Form and then down here it says Import OBJ 3D Models. So I'll select this and then I'm gonna go to Select OBJ Files and I'll go select this TIE Fighter right here, click OK and now it'll bring this TIE Fighter in. It's got a bunch of nodes here. I'm gonna switch the nodes to lines. Now we got these lines connecting. It still looks pretty terrible. So I'm gonna go down here to connections and I'm gonna switch from connection method serial, I'm gonna switch it down to triangulation which is gonna to try to match the original uh, OBJ file. There we go, now we got this cool looking TIE Fighter and actually I'm gonna go over to the lines, and we wanna bring the thickness of these lines down because it's just way too thick. And I can click on hidden lines, which is gonna make it hide the lines so I can't basically see through it. I'm only seeing the lines on the outside of the wireframe. I can control the opacity of that. And now if I go to transform and start to spin this around on the Y axis, now we can throw this little TIE Fighter in uh, Iron Man's heads up display. Okay, so we got the 3D OBJ, we got the train map. I'm gonna show you one other cool thing that I would probably be using this for, and that's for infographics. So this grid here, let's say we're doing like a documentary piece on uh, Arctic foxes in Iceland. So I wanna show a bunch of Arctic foxes via different iconography. So I reset this, I'm gonna go back down to form, and I'm gonna switch this to grid. So now I have this nice little grid here. And let's say we want to talk about a specific number of Arctic foxes. So I can change the node count here. Let's say there's 25. So we're going to do a grid of five by five. And I can control, you know, the, the spacing here in between these. And I'm going to go down to nodes and I'm going to switch the node type to image list. And then I'll click on this, and I actually have this icon of a fox here. I'll click on that, click on this, and it's actually white, so you can't see it right there. And now, you can't really see it because they're so small, but these are, in fact, icons of Arctic fox. So I'm going to bring the size way up, and voila, now I've got this cool grid of these Arctic foxes, and I can animate this in a variety of different ways. Let's say I go back to the form here, and I actually only want to do... Um, I want to have like a little graph here, so I want it to be vertical maybe. So I'll set this to 1. So let's quickly do Y size. So that's one cool thing you can do. Really simple. Let's bring this back up to 5. One of the really cool thing you can do here is morphing. So let's say I want to take this grid and put it in a circle shape. So I can go down to effects and then I can do morphing. And I can select in form, like how do I want these shapes to end up? I want them to end up as a circle. And then I animate that time here. So you see as I go from zero to one, it's gonna animate that into a circle. So we can animate the time of this. So now I've got this sweet fox circle. I can change the orientation here. So let's say, look at camera. I don't want them to be like round like that. That's cool. I can animate the size as well. So let's go back down to node size. So right now it's set to 108. We could have it go down to 75. That's looking a little bit cooler.
Another thing you can do is check this out. I'm gonna go select that Iceland map again. We're gonna do Iceland map, luminance, and we're just gonna have this solid Iceland map. Set the resolution down to four. Actually, I'm gonna set the resolution way down. And now I can go down to nodes here and just select a type and go to image list. And now I can click on the image list and just select that fox again. And now I've got a map that's consisting of a bunch of different foxes here. So now I've got this cool Arctic fox head map here. And I can change this to randomize the size by different, um, you know, different methods here. And I can even add to the image list here. I think I can add multiple images. So if I click on the plus here, I could add the flag of Iceland and click OK and let's see what happens. Yeah, now it, now I've got this flag of Iceland as well as the fox heads in here. Secondary size, 35. All right, so there you have it. That's Nodes 3 for Adobe After Effects. Once again, this is Mac only, um, but it also works in Final Cut Pro, works in Motion, as well as Adobe Premiere Pro. And again, only scratch the surface here. There's just a ton of incredible stuff you can do with this. Um, there's stuff I didn't even touch on, like that has a replicator that's like a basically like a repeater on steroids that you can do a bunch of cool stuff with. The thing that surprised me the most about this tool is how fast it is. I'm working on this old system, and when I initially started playing around with this, I thought it wasn't, wasn't gonna be able to hang, but it actually surprised me at how fast it is, and especially the rendering. Really, really impressed by this. So if you wanna check this out, be sure to follow that link down in the video description. Um, I make a commission off that, so it helps support the channel. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, and if you wanna see more cool Tuesday tool videos, there's a playlist down in the video description, or you can just subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell.